I'm Greg Reynolds. Uh, we have Riverbend Farm and actually got involved in saving seeds to meet the needs of our farm. So this year for North Circle Seeds we grew the San Marzano, which is a, a classic Italian paste tomato. Punta Banda is one, the, a seed that came from Zach. We also grew an orange corn that uh, Zach brought me the seed for. Last year we did a kale trial with five varieties of curly green kale and I'm more interested in well-adapted local varieties. I saved several plants of each variety, planted them out this spring, and got a, a new variety of curly green kale. You know, there's a million stories uh, that, that it's like the tomatoes, saving tomato seeds. And I trialed tomatoes for three or four years, and then a few years later, all I could buy was packets of seed, and they went out of production. So I picked a couple of likely candidates, and have been adapting and saving those seeds for seven or eight years now. Uh, one of our big crops has been arugula. Uh, we sold to co-ops and restaurants. The real uh, benefit of having locally produced seeds is that they're adapted to our, our region, that we have a chance to select against diseases that are common here. I'm Adria Fernandez. I'm a research scientist uh, from the Department of Horticulture at the U of M. And we're working on an, a cover crop experiment. So we're looking at cover crop opportunities for vegetable farmers. Cover crops are basically any plant that you put in the ground, which doesn't have necessarily a direct economic outturn out of it. So you are looking to acquire more ecosystem services. So for example, protecting the soil, having nitrogen recycles, or in my case, attracting beneficial insects. So all of this is something that will benefit us in the long run to, to have more production at the, at the end of our season. I like cover crop work because they can get you so many functions at once in your farming system. So they're building a lot of organic matter and building your soil. They're physically stabilizing the soil and holding it in place. So they're contributing to the physical condition of the soil. They're contributing to fertility. They're contributing to the overall diversity of your own farm rotation and to the diversity that's out there on the landscape. So this experiment looks at different cover crops that can be used before or after vegetables. And so we have been growing some cover crops out here and different species and we're sampling the soil that they've been growing in to look at how they're affecting the soil fertility um, and sampling for uh, beneficial insects to see who's visiting these plots. My primary task is to collect observational insect data and flower data in the aspect of insect community. We're specifically looking at diversity and that entails measuring the abundance of the insects, measuring the richness of like species, and also evenness of those species throughout our plots. These are the times when insect populations are really reproducing and mating so they need the energy, they need nectar, they need pollen to feed and keep those populations running. Everybody could have cover crops even if it's on your patio, on your lawn, your home gardens. It's a great way to add support and diversity resources for all types of organisms, not only insects. Having practices that actually give back to the environment and maintain, maintain our system is something that is what we really need to be applying if we want a, a sustainable and sovereign food system.